Having your whole genome sequenced once cost millions and millions of dollars. But within five years, it's forecast that you could find out your DNA blueprint for $100. That could transform medicine and the way people manage their health, preventing you becoming sick before you show any signs of being ill. And that's one of the findings from the first global genomics report by the Garvin Institute of Medical Research. And the author, Dr. Thomas Barlow, joins us now to tell us more about these fascinating findings. Um, I guess firstly, though, back to basics, Dr. Barlow, can you just explain what exactly is human genome sequencing? Sure thing, Bridie. Thanks for having me on the show. Uh, we all know that much of what makes us who we are is encoded in our genes, in our DNA. Now, a genome is just the entire complement of genes that make a person who they are. So you can think of a genome as, uh, as, as the instruction manual for making a person. And now, your genome is obviously very different from mine. To analyse a person's genome, you need to be able to evaluate the sequence of bases in a person's DNA. Now, now, a genome is roughly six billion bases long. It's an incredible information-intensive problem to sequence an individual's genome. Uh, when it was first done, it, the, the Human Genome Project is something a lot of people would be aware of. When it was first done, that cost roughly $3 billion, and it took a decade. And uh, back in about 2000, the technology had improved to the point where, Bridie, if you'd wanted to get your genome sequenced, uh, it, it would have cost you a hundred million dollars to do it, and today the price is is around about a thousand US dollars. And one of the findings from this first global genomics report that you've done is that it, the cost is going to come down even more within five years to around a hundred dollars. What's driving that? Well, these are the forecasts actually from uh, the industry itself. There are a range of companies. I mean, the, the predominant one, the, the market leader, is Illumina. And uh, consistently since 2004, w which was a, there was an invention of a new technology called high throughput sequencing, which just enabled very efficient sequencing of DNA. Since that time, the technology has improved in efficiency and the costs have dropped actually at a faster rate than has happened with transistors. You know how we, we every year uh, computers get cheaper and faster, uh, we pack more information in our phones, and we're all aware of how quickly technology has progressed around computation and communications. Well, actually, in this space, in high-throughput sequencing, it's the, 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 the pace of change technologically has actually been faster even than has, has occurred in computing. Amazing, isn't it? So coming down to what, $100 within five years. And it's just taken through a blood test, is that right? Yeah, well, actually, it can be taken via a blood test. Uh, you can do a whole range of sampling, but there are, in, companies are increasingly looking at saliva testing. And certainly, if you, if you were to go to a, a, a company that now that's focused on consumer products and not whole genome sequencing, but, um, but low-scale genotyping, they will always use a saliva test. So, I mean, it sounds like there's extraordinary um, changes happening, transformations happening in this field. Just how will it help healthy people? I mean, how will it sort of transform medicine in, in the future? Well, uh, Bridie, it's not just in the future. It's in the present, actually. And that's something that astonished me uh, doing this work. This is an area, it's a really good news story, it's an area where years of quite fundamental research carried out in universities and medical research institutes and government agencies has produced an explosion of new discoveries. And the new discoveries have accelerated really in the last three to four years. Where you see in the scientific literature, in the patent literature, in the way, in the, in the way clinical trials are changing, you see a shift in the way medical research is carried out. And, uh, and the consequence is already being felt in the medical system. So, I mean, a healthy person could go get their genome sequenced and then they would know what diseases they might get in the future. Absolutely. So there are, there are a range of existing applications. At one end of the spectrum, there are individuals with, who have had uh, medical problems they've not been able to resolve. And after years of a, 
heart rending, rendering uh, diagnostic odyssey. These people are now starting to get answers. They're starting to discover what actually was the problem that they had. Another area which is just booming is in the treatment of cancer. Now, increasingly, uh, cancer treatments are being targeted on the basis of um, the, the genomic profile of a, of a tumour. Now, now, cancer is essentially a genetic disease. Uh, it's a disease... Our, our genes will influence our, our development. They, they influence how we become who we are physically. When something goes wrong in your development, or if you have a mutation in genes that are involved in developmental processes, you can end up with cancers. And so increasingly, uh, we're not categorising cancers by their location in the body. We're actually categorising them by a genetic profile, a genomic profile. And, and, and this is important not just in treating cancer, but also in early detection of cancers. I mean, there are examples of individuals who have had uh, genome uh, testing and they've identified that they were actually at very elevated risk of certain rare cancers. And then they'd go and get an, an MRI, full body scan, and they've had cancers discovered when the patient actually wasn't aware that they were there. So it really shifts the, the paradigm by which medicine is practised. Just, what are some of the other findings from your report? Because um, something that was interesting was that while the cost of the genome sequencing will come down rapidly, the cost of assessing that data is still expensive. But will that drop too? Of course it, it will drop. Uh, it's, a, it's an area where there's just incredibly rapid change. I think m much of the value proposition for companies operating in this space will be on the interpretation side. And there are, there's, a, uh, there's been a proliferation of companies actually uh, focused on clinical decision support systems, uh, gen analysis of uh, genomic data. And of course, the more data uh, is available for analysis, uh, the more efficient and effective such analysis becomes. But of course, uh, one should also remember that to understand, you know, when the Human Genome Project was completed back in the early 2000s, we had this, uh, this what was, what's called the human reference genome. Nobody really understood what it meant. And to understand what it means, you have to marry the genomic data with clinical data, but you also have to conduct very deep studies to understand how and why it is that our genes have the physical effects within our bodies that they do have. And that's, those are problems for research, um, you know, it's traditional bench, bench research, uh, and, and that's an area where, you know, there are advances all the time. I mean, every, every day, every week in the, in the scientific literature, there are new findings that are added into the... Um, the, the data sets and the evaluation tools that are now available increasingly to clinicians.